We're going to start with our feet directly underneath our hips. We want to take the head looking up and down. Just checking in with your neck, moving nice and slowly, noticing how you feel. Let's take that side to side nice and slowly. So find a gentle tuck of the chin, rotate it towards one shoulder and then the other shoulder. Just a gentle upwards lift of the pelvic floor as you stand and move. And now we're going to drop the ear down to one shoulder, lift it to the center and then across to the other shoulder. Four more. Trying to keep the shoulders nice and still. Until now, let's start to roll them back one at a time. And then roll them forward. Great, let's get the elbows involved. So the shoulders really, armpits are opening up. And then roll them forward. And bringing the arms up by the ears like we're doing backstroke, one arm at a time, circles back. One arm is at the bottom and the other arm is by the ear. And then front crawl or freestyle. If only there were open swimming pools. There's one like just down the road for me. It's teasing me. Great, now we're going to soften the knees a little bit more as we start to work with the ribs. And you're welcome to place your hands on your hips so that you can make sure that your bum isn't tipping or tucking. We're going to lift the rib cage up and then pull the front ribs in and back. And we're trying not to move the pelvis at all as we open the chest and the ribs, draw them in, back and down. Open and expand, contract and sink in. One. Next, it's a little bit harder. We've got to try and move the ribs from side to side. So we're lifting the ribs away from the hips. The hips stay still. And then we place them back where they started. Lifting the ribs to the side without moving the hips. And then place them back where they started. So we're drawing the ribs out. And then reconnecting them in and down. Drawing the ribs up and out. Reconnecting them in and down. Explore that four more times. Four. Three, two, one. Now let's have some fun. Nice and bend in those knees. We're going to take the ribs forward, circle them around to the side, scoop them into the back, and then sweep them around to the front. So take it over to the back, circle it through. Two more times in this direction. Try not to miss any bits and try really hard not to move your hips. So bending those knees as much as you need to keep the hips really steady. Other way. So that means your knees don't move either. Oof. Trying to find all four edges. Even though it's a circle, we're still looking to hit north, south, east, and west. Last two. We're going to get to move the knees and the hips in just a second. Job done. Tuck it. And then tip it away. Tuck it, tip it away. Good, now we're just moving the pelvis front and back, keeping the ribs contained. And then side to side. So find neutral to begin with. Lift the hip and your leg will extend. Drop it back to the center. Lift the hip, leg will extend. Drop it back to the center. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Now from here, scoop it forward to the other side and all the way back and around. Forward to the other side, all the way back and around. Two more times in this direction. One more time. Great. Once you get to the front, we'll take it the other way. So in this nice tuck, sweep it over, extend it back over and through. And I just want you to notice the alignment of your knees. They're still facing parallel when we're moving the hips. We're not allowing the knees to rotate in towards each other. They do change in how much they're bent and extended, but they don't turn in. 
Nice, shake that off. All right. So we're going to come up onto the big toe of one foot. This is my left foot, but you can do whatever you want. So we're on the big toe, we're pressing the heel forward, then we're slowly going to take it via the little toe edge of the foot down to the ground. Try and keep your arch working really hard to stay lifted. Then from the heel, we're going to peel up onto the toe and from the little toe edge, keeping the foot in neutral, we're still, we're not twisting it out to the side, press it back down onto the floor. Two more. Peel, 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 peel. Press, 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 press. Peel, 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 peel. And press, 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 press. Other side. So we start on the big toe. So I want to make sure that the knees are parallel and the foot isn't, the ankle isn't releasing out to the side. We keep it really parallel. And then we work by the outside line of the foot, keeping the arch lifted as we press it down through the floor without moving anything else. Peel the heel away, come up onto the ball of the foot, keeping the ankle in neutral. This is an ankle strengthening exercise. Also, if you have a tendency to sickle your feet, this is a really great way to start addressing that. One more, nice and slow. Cool, we're now going to take our feet to double hips distance apart and slide the hands down the thighs as we arch the back. Once you get as low as you can go, curl the ribs in, drop the crown down and roll back up to stand. The shoulders roll back to open the chest as we make our way down. And we always make sure that the knees rotate out to minimum third toes. Open the chest at the top, take it down to the ground. Open the chest at the top. This time we're going to come all the way down to the floor. And just when your hands touch down, check in on your knees. So they bent a lot and they still face out to your third toes. It's really important they're not dropping in. Can we drop the bottom down a little lower and lift the chest a little higher? Now we're going to push down through both the heels and the balls of the feet as we slowly extend the head, legs and drop the head down. So that won't go to full extension yet. We're just starting to warm up that bend and extend. Hamstrings haven't had any warning. <laughs> this is their very gentle warning. So drop the bottom a lot. Lift the bottom up. Drop the bottom a lot. And lift the bottom up. See if we can curl the belly in to come up just most of the way. Let the shoulders hang heavy. Nod your head yes. Shake your head no. And roll up nice and slow. So I did mention that you would need something to potentially hold on to. This is where you can hold on to something if you would like. Otherwise, if you'd like to work on the balance and stability and how to use your foot effectively, try it first hands free. So we're going to, if you're going hands free, hands on the hips. If you're going to use an aid, pop it on the chair. We're going to lift the left knee up. We're going to take it wide to the side, down to the ground, all the way around. Now, while I'm moving this left knee, I'm focusing on keeping my hips stacked. Cool. I'm looking at a point on the floor. It's a visual anchor point. Keeps me nice and steady. And then we're going to go the other way. So find that wide point. We'll take the knee across, down and around. Okay, we've got four circles. And I'd like you to hug your knee towards your chest, please. Once we've done those circles. Great. Drop the shoulders down, squeeze it in as tight as you can. Take a breath in. Try and lift your heel. It might not lift, but try. Take a breath in. Try and lift your heel. I'm the one falling over. Two more of these. <laughs> if I had a left shoulder to pull back, that'd be really helpful. And one, good, but much better. And then take that one down, shake it out. We're just gonna step that foot back and stretch out the calf muscle. So the same leg that was to your chest, extend it back, keep the pelvis square, tuck the tailbone under, and then press the heel down in parallel towards the ground. Stepping the feet together, other side. So either holding onto something or hands on hips, lifting the knee as high as you can without lifting the hip. Take it wide to the side to begin. Take it down towards the ground. 
up and around. So we open it out, circle it down and away. Good. Nice and slow. You're looking really great, guys. Moving with control. Now, once we open it back out again, we're going to reverse it. Close it across, down and through. Close across, down and through. You guys are amazing. Anita, your balance is incredible. Last one. Now lift that knee, hug it tight to your chest. We're going to take a breath in and lift the left heel as you breathe out. <laughs> take your breath in. Lift the heel as you breathe out. Inhale to lower. Two more. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. You can tell I'm working on this one for me, right? You guys are way better at it than I am. Shake it out. Okie dokie. Now we've got our feet really working and our ankles really working. We're going to start warming up our squat pattern. So with our squat pattern, you can have five to 10 degrees of turn out of the feet. Five to 10 degrees isn't a lot, guys. I see lots of people do their squats in a 45 degree rotation. Makes it really easy to roll in onto the arches of your feet. So think about maybe five to 10 degrees turnout. The difference between a squat and a deadlift is that a squat starts at your knees. So start to send your knees out to the sides. Try and maintain neutral pelvis and lengthen the tailbones backwards. Great. Now, just check in that your knees aren't coming forward of your toes. Scoop the rib cage in, stick your bottom out a little further. Hold here for five, four, open your chest, relax your shoulders. Three, two, one. Squeeze the bottom to stand up and don't lock your knees out at the top because you're loading your legs. Don't lock them out. All right, we're going to do that again. Down for five, hold for five, up for five. Take a breath in, lift your pelvic floor, break at the knees, start to sink back. When you come down as low as you can go with a long straight spine, tailbone lengthening back. This time, I'd like you to take your wrists, press them into your knees, press the collarbones apart as you press your knees apart. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly coming up to step. We're gonna do that one more time with that same alignment, arms pushing out into the knees so that they stay in line with the third toes. But the next thing we're going to think about is lifting the arches of the feet. Also really lifting the arches and having strong feet in the position. So take a breath in, roll the shoulders back, lift your pelvic floor and start to lower down into our squat. See how low you can go if you just squeeze the belly in and lengthen the tailbone back. Now press open, broaden the collarbones, pressing the arms into the legs and see if you can lift your arches and spread and claw down through all 10 toes. Holding here for five, four, Three, two, one, squeeze the bum, stand up nice and slow. Let's start to put some things together now. So we're gonna take a squat and circle one leg out. We're gonna take a squat, circle the other leg out. Then we're gonna squat, circle the first leg in, then squat and circle the other leg in. And we're gonna go through that pattern three times. Ready? Let's start with a squat. Breathe in, pelvic floor rising, squat, circle out. That's one, squat, circle out. That's two, now we're gonna circle in, squat, circle in, squat, circle in. Round one done, squat, circle out, squat, circle out. You got it, squat, circle in, squat. Round two, one more time, squat, circle out, squat, circle out, squat, circle in. Ah, squat, circle in. Good, lots of balance challenges there today. Before we come into trying our full physio squat, it's important that we try and look at how much we can align and lengthen our spine. So I'd like you to take a block or something that you can hold in your hand so that we can open up our shoulders to extend them fully. And if you wanna come down to your knees for this part, I will, so I don't mind if you do as well. It's much easier once you're on your knees. You can do it, use a cushion, you can use a lunchbox, you can use a book, but just gonna hold it like it's um, a dinner plate. So your hand is directly underneath it and it's not holding onto any of the edges. We start by taking the block out to the side. I'm gonna circle it all the way behind the head. 
Good, sweep it forward. All the way around to the side. Turn it in towards you Whee! <laughs> and bring it back to the start position. So we're trying not to drop the block when we do this. Circle it out. Take it back and around over the head. Take it across to the side. Slowly, I hate this part, turn it in towards you. I always bump myself. Now when we're doing this, we're trying not to move our body a great deal. So let's do two more in this direction in this hand. Out to the side over the head, forward, okay, spin it Deb, spin it, spin it, no bump, yes, let's go one more time, out to the side, I'm just trying to dodge the chair behind me, over the head, really extend as you bring it forward, and then you have to reach it back, before turning it in, and spinning it through. All right, so to go the other way, we start with the hand out to the side, and then turn the elbow out and the hand in. We extend the arm fully. We circle the arm up and over the head, and we slowly bring it back down and around. The elbow touches the ribs. We turn the block in. We circle it up and over the head, all the way around until the elbow touches the ribs. This way is so much easier. Okay. And I think we just have one more. Four on each side. Great. All right. So we're going to do that on the other hand. I'll keep going on the same hand. It's fine. I'll keep joining you. You're going to switch. So starting with the elbow and the hand turned out, we do our difficult direction first. We're going to spin the block backwards. Extend it out to the side. Up and over the head. No, this is the easy way. I'm taking it the easy way first. Doesn't matter as long as you're going one way. Switch it. Around and down, keeping the body just as still as possible. And the last one. And then we take it back the other way. So we're going to sweep it back over the head, then out fully to the side, then turn it in until the elbow touches. Oh, so much better on round two. Up and over behind the head, extend it all the way with a straight arm, then turn it under until the elbow touches the side. Sweep by the full extent of the globe. And one more. Hopefully we'll have wonderful fluid movement through our shoulders now. You can pop that down. Bring those arms up by your head. Good. Extend them all the way up to the ceiling. Really stretch, energize the fingers. Now pull the rib cage in, lift the pelvic floor, hold it here for 10. No kinky elbows. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And soften it down. All right, let's hop back up. So we're going to practice five squats and we're going to practice keeping the arms beside the ears. So you'll only be able to go as low in the hips as your arms don't drop forward. So this is our preparation for getting our spine to work like we want it to when we finally visit the physio squats. I'm going to show you this 45 degrees. So my feet are between five and 10 degrees turnout. My knees are already soft and I extend my arms up by my ears. Drawing the ribs in and back, pelvic floor lifting, breathe in to start and lower down through the hips without letting the arms come forward or the chest come forward. Try and keep out any kinky elbows and slowly squeeze the bottom, standing up perfectly straight. That's one. So coming down, controlling the knees, keeping them out to the third toes, arches of the feet lifted. Good. Three more. Careful that you don't release the belt around your hips. That will release your tailbone back and will make you puff up your chest. So we're working on neutral spine. Straight line from hips to fingertips. Good. This can be our last one. 
Fantastic. Circle the shoulders back three times, both arms nice and straight, and then circle them forwards three times at the top. All right, this is the moment we've been waiting for, team. You're going to need to move your camera, your phone to a point where you have a door frame or a wall to hold on to. That's my door frame, yay! All right, so this is what we want. I'm going to straddle my door frame. I actually have the door hook there and I know it's really well secured. So I grip into that with my fingertips, but you might not, right? I'm holding on. Five to 10 degrees turnout, not too wide. Actually a bit narrower than we were practicing before. So I'm gonna come down, trying to keep my back as straight as possible and sit as low as possible. And I'm slowly gonna pull myself up. I'm going to come down as low as possible, keeping my back as straight as possible, and then slowly pull myself up. Cool, so you're going to do five of those. I'm going to watch you. You got posts to hold on to, ladies? Posts in the backyard? Good. Step a little closer to the pole, Tash. Yep, nice. Good. Just checking you out. Yep, step closer, Sarah May. Step closer to the pole, heaps closer. Yep. Nice, keeping the chest up. Beautiful, so much better. Good, so standing in nice and close. Come on, Sharon. I know it's hard to hold on to the wall. <laughs> good, good. Looking good, Anita. You're nice and close to that wall. Just think about a bit wider through the knees and not so wide through the feet. So Anita, turn your feet back in a bit. Yep, and think about your knees spreading wider. You can even step your feet a little closer together. Looking good, Rach and Ash. Let's go Astagrass, bum to the floor. Woo, -woo that's it, ladies. Two more wherever you are, guys. Tash, you can step your feet a little bit closer now and try and get your bum all the way to the ground. Great, last two. Yes, 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 yes. And one more time. You guys are amazing, all done. Come back to me. We're gonna <laughs> hit mobility today is gonna be on fire. Fire. All right, so we're coming back to each other. We're not gonna use any more props or supports. We're gonna try this without using anything to hold on to. It's really difficult at first. I had to practice this religiously. I think it took me about three weeks to be able to do 15 of these without holding on to anything, but it completely changed the way my body moves. So heaps and heaps of benefits being able to do a good ass to grass squat. We're gonna use the arms as we move and every different body. So depending on your posture and the way that your spine likes to shift as it gets challenged, your arms will need to go to a different place. So figuring out how to use your arms to help you is part of the puzzle. But I'm just gonna, mine will slowly come up as my bum goes down. You can try that on. So the feet aren't too far apart. Cool, they're quite narrow. You wanna think about breaking in the knees and slowly, slowly. So my arms extend up as my bottom extends down and I sit towards my heels. And then I open my chest as I push my feet through the floor to slowly rise up. Also be careful you don't hunch your shoulders. It's another thing to watch out for. Although when you're first learning this and taking the bottom to full range, shoulders will collapse quite commonly as you're learning this. I just wanna see you practice this two more times. I know it's tough and we've done a lot of butt stuff. Good, keep the core switched on nice and strong, yeah? And Ash, step your feet a little closer. You're doing amazing, Rach. Good, nice, Sharon. You can step your feet a bit closer now. Yeah, your feet can come closer, Sarah May, for sure. Beautiful squat though, closer feet. <laughs> Good, nice, Anita, try and keep your chest up. Last one, good. Job done, all right. So I'm going to stand side on so I can see you for the next bit. You can use your mats, but I have to obviously stay in focus with you. So now we're going to practice our sumo stance. Completely different squat. 
The one that we are working on is all about your spinal mobility. It's about your hips. This one, adductors, cool inner thighs. All about that inner thigh life. My body hates this, but we have to do it. <laughs> so standing with our feet wider and turned out. Now, it's really common, the reason my body hates this is I have internally rotated thighs, internally rotated hips. So my knees collapse in. You've got to really switch your adductors on as well as these muscles in the outsides of your butt to get your knees to spiral open enough to be able to do this without them collapsing in. So really feel your butt fire up, already soft knees pointing out to the third toes. I'm lucky if I can get mine to point my big toes. So we're going to start here. We're slowly going to open through the adductors, sending the knees out wide to the side. I can't go too low, otherwise I over tuck to compensate. So I want to try and still focus on that nice neutral spine and then slowly come up to stand. Coming out wide to the side. Now I find it really helps me to keep my arms by my ears. I have much better control of my spine when I am in an overhead position, but that's because of my posture. Everyone's different. All right, I want you to start thinking about taking this lower now, coming down deeper. Warmed up the pattern. So eventually we're gonna sit on the ground. Last two. Let's get that bottom on the floor. Next one, all the way down. So we're going to take our right heel over to one edge, the knee to the back edge, and it shouldn't take much to adjust so that the back knee is open to 90 degrees as well. I'm just going to change the focus of the camera a little bit so you can see me better. Down we go. All right, so we've got this 90 degrees. People often bring their back knee too far forward, send it away and make sure the heel is in line with the knee. We're going to do three of each in two different spinal alignments. So I'm going to ask you, this is your right leg in front. We've got our nice little 90-90 uh, twirly rainbow. Bring your left hand onto your right knee. Bring your right hand out to the side of your right hip and rotate. Spread the collarbones apart, take a big breath in. And lift your left foot as you breathe out. Inhale it down, exhale it up. We have five of these, that's two done. Nothing else moves. All right, pause. Come back to the center now. Place your right hand in front of your right knee. Place your left hand in front of your right ankle. Roll the shoulders back, lift the chest, breathe in. And lift the back foot, five. Four, a little bit more challenging now, right? Three, two, one. Placing the hands on the back of the head. Elbows nice and wide. I know, you're gonna hate me. <laughs> your hips will be amazing. You'll go out and dance with salsa. Elbows wide to the side, nice long spine. Breath in, lift the heel. One, two, I'm on fire. <laughs> Three, four. Five, all right, tap it out. All right, external rotation, three times. Turning to the side. Left hand on your knee, right hand on the ground. Take a breath in. Heel rises, one. Ah, sorry, knee rises, one. Two. Don't let anything else move, hold your position. Four. Five, to the center now, hands in front of the shin. Shoulders back, chest up, lift the knee. One, two, three, four, hold on, five. You're ready to sit up tall. Hands on the base of the skull, elbows nice and wide. Let's lift that knee. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. It's time to lift the whole leg. So come back into your twist. Left hand on the right knee, rotate it to the side. Take a breath in, up we go. One, two, three, four, five. Bring it to the middle now. Hands in front, shoulders back, 
belly strong. One, whoo, two, try not to bend your elbows. Three, four, five. Can I get a hands in the air like I just don't get? Yeah, to the moon, to the base of your skull. Let's go five lifts. Two, three, four, five. All right, tap out. We're gonna do one last little exercise here and we're just gonna do it with the hands on the back of the head. We're gonna lift the leg up, extend it. Turn it all the way through until your bottom hits the floor. Keep your chest open, your spine straight, lift the leg, lower it down, open it, turn it in, pop it down. There's one, you got five. Lift it, extend it, turn it up, sweep it through. Lift it up, lower down, sweep it back, turn it in and down. So we're up, extend, toes to the ceiling when it comes forward, toes to the ceiling when it goes back, turn it in, pop it down, lift it up, turn it up, bring it forward, take it higher, take it back, turn it in, pop it down. One more time, lift it up. Turn it up, bring it forward, take it higher, take it back, turn it in, pop it down. Job done. Good, all right, other leg. You can just switch it, you can turn it, whatever you want to do. Find my knee. Ugh, gonna shove all the way over so I'm contained by the mat. 90-90, checking our cue angles that the front of the knee is in line with the center of the hip in both places and that the heel is tracking with the center of the knee. Okay, turning to the side, this hand on the knee, the other hand on the floor, open the chest, take a breath in. Here we go, lift the heel, five, four, three, doesn't it suck that we've all got two legs? Two, one, bring it to the center. Hands on the ground, shoulders back. Lift again, five, four, three, you're doing great. Two, feel that butt turn on, one, good stuff. Now we're gonna go hands to the base of the skull, elbows nice and wide, five lifts of the heel. Five, four, three, two, one. Great work, come back into the twist. We're going to lift the knee now. Take a breath in to begin. Lift it up for five, four, three, two, one. Come to parallel. Lift the knee. One, two, three, four, five. Hands to the base of the skull, sitting up nice and tall. Last round. Five, four, Three, this is my happy hip. It likes it so much more than the other side. One, do you need a break? Do you need to tap out before we lift the leg? Let's take a little rest. All right. Whole leg now. Remember that your heel and your knee need to travel together, just like in clam. Three, in Pilates. Take that twist. Chest is open. Big breath in. Up goes the leg for five. Four. Three. Two. One, turn it to the center, roll the shoulders back, belly sweeping in, up for five, four, three, keep it back, don't let it creep forward, two, one, hands behind the head, let's go, five, keep it back, four, my right knee is creeping forward like no one's business, get back, again. last one, all right, tap out. Mobility situation, hands stay at the base of the skull. So we're gonna keep collarbones open, chin tucked in, spine and neck long. Lift the leg and extend it, turn it up. Sweep it forward, bum down. Lift the leg, long spine, bring it back down. Sweep it out to the side, turn it in and rest it down exactly where it started. Lift, extend, rotate. Spin it forward, bum down, rise. Take it back. Rotate, replace. There's two, three to go. I 
I have one more. And we are done. Stay here on this leg, tap out. So I want you to keep this nice 90-90 angle. I like to hold on to my foot with this hand. You might not like to, you might be able to take your hand directly to the floor, but it helps me keep conscious of where my body is. So I'm trying to keep my hips and my ribs in alignment with the outside lines of my thigh and my shin as I tip forward. Keep the chest open, keep the spine long and straight. Deep breathing here. Feel that left hip pulling back. Now we're not going to change too much. Coming up, we're going to rotate this to the other side. So if you lift both of your sets of big toes, you should notice that you're in a symmetrical shape. If you're not, set it up now and it'll help you when you get to the other side. So twisting and rotating over, keeping the feet in position. I need to shift that knee back just a touch, but I'm pretty much in the right spot. Keep the chest open as you begin and keep your body in line. So the spine is parallel to the left shin and the right thigh as you hold. Shoulders back. back over to the left leg we're going to take a half pigeon so for this one it's not a flex it's not a point it's a point so we have the ball of the foot really energized to protect the knee and we can creep that knee a little wider now rolling onto the right hip extending the leg back and making sure that the foot isn't sickling it's really important that you're long through the ankle and to achieve that you have to send your big toe away Think about pushing through the big toe. All right, chest is open, shoulders back, take a breath in. Start to roll down through the spine as you breathe out. Let your forehead touch the ground at the bottom and then curling from the base of the ribs, through the center of the ribs, through the backs of the shoulders and all the way up with the inhale. So we leave with the low belly. We're pushing the chest forward. We're coming down through a snake action. At the bottom, the forehead comes to the ground. We lift from the low belly. Thinking about that waterfall cascade. Down. And up. And we're gonna come all the way to the bottom now. Great stuff. Can you come onto your elbows? If you can't, place some blocks under your forearms to make that accessible for you. So you can place the blocks under the forearms or cushions under the forearms so that you're lifted. If your left hip is still a really long way from the floor, you might want to put a cushion under that after this next exercise. So we're going to feel the left hip push back. So keeping that right leg long and straight, push the left hip back a little. Now we're going to draw the left hip forward towards the left heel. Send it back and out to the side. Bring it forward to the heel. Do this two more times. I have to keep sneaking my right leg back while I'm doing this. All right, come to the center. See if you can line up your spine so it's long and straight, that you're in the middle, that your hips are square, that you can feel that. So the left hip is pulling forward, the right hip is pressing, sorry, the left hip is pulling back, the right hip is pressing forward and down, but that they're creating square. This space across the low back isn't twisted or contorted in any way. If you need support under the left hip, use your block or your cushion here. And if you're comfortable to rest your forehead all the way down on the floor, please feel free. This here for another 10 seconds. All right, bringing the, the arms out wide to the side now, I want you to feel the line from the center of the collarbones all the way out to the elbows. Long spine, open chest. 
and slowly press through the arms to rise. We're going to sit onto the left hip. And we're going to extend the right leg forward to the side. Nice. So your left arm, sorry, your right arm is now going to slide across your body. So it's scissoring across the left thigh. Your left arm is coming up beside your ear. We're going to turn to the left, take a breath in and tip to the right as we breathe out. Now this job of the right arm across your lap is to keep this shoulder both descended and the more you energize the push through the right fingertips, the more you'll open up towards the ceiling. With that left arm extended fully, I'd like you to breathe in, bend the elbow, pull it all the way back and breathe out, slice the arm as you extend it over your head. Bend the elbow, pull back. Exhale, extend, slice it overhead. Keep your chin tucked in, keep your neck in line with the rest of your spine. And extending. And hold that extension. Try and rotate your chin towards your top shoulder now. We're here for five, four, three, two, and one. Sitting all the way up, left arm still beside the ear. Right arm comes to join the party. We're going to turn towards the right leg now. Take a big breath in and place the hands down wherever they land. Shoulders back, chest lifting. Inhale. Bend the elbows to lower with a straight back as you exhale. I like to flex my foot for this one. Walk the arms forward until the elbows are extended. Arch the back, keep the tailbone anchored to the floor. Breathe in, bend the elbows. See if you can bend a little bit more. Breathe out. Let's go one more time. And staying here for 10 seconds. Try and keep both shoulders, both sides of the chest, the same distance from the ground. Rolling up slowly, so you can bring your hands back in line with your hips to keep the chest open as you rise. The right foot is now going to step over to the outside of your left knee. It's time to take a nice big twist. So once that crosses over, anchor the right hip down, spin to the right. And use your left arm to push your right leg away. Just make sure that the collarbones are open and the shoulders are down and back. Turning back to the center, this right leg is now in front. So we'll position it for our half pigeon on the second side. Find that point. So really energizing the ball of the foot to protect the knee. Slide it out to the side and then extend the left leg back turning the knee straight down to the ground. Oh, it's been compressed for a long time. To give mine a nice little wiggle before I can extend it fully. <laughs> All right, once that ankle is down, I'm checking in that I'm really reaching through my big toe, I'm not sickling the foot and I'm in the center. Both hips are equally seeking the ground. No one is letting the other drop closer. We're on the fingertips, the chest is open. And from the low belly, we start to pour our weight towards the floor. Or it comes down last. The low ribs rise first. And it's one rib at a time. Chest open at the top. And slowly back down. So we've got three rounds of this. We do a third. Well, we do a fourth way down and hold there. So that's the second round. And we come all the way down and hold. Forearms, please. Locks if you need. Right hip goes back. Right hip comes forward to the heel. Back to the floor, forward to the heel. Only move to where you're comfortable. Don't overdo it. One more round, forward and back. And then find yourself in the center of all that. Maximum extension of the left leg. And see if you can relax.
slowly coming up now. So bringing the hands out wide, feeling the line all the way across from the collarbones to the elbows, keeping your back long and straight as we come up. Sitting on the right hip, spinning that left leg around. So now it's your left arm that scissors across the right thigh. Your right arm comes up by your ear. You rotate to the right and slowly lower down to the left. We're going to inhale, bend the right elbow. Exhale, extend the arm across. Keep the ribs in the body. Keep the neck following the line of the spine. We have two more. Last one. Now really reach both arms as much as you can in both directions. Rotate the chin up towards the shoulder, keeping it tucked in. We're here for five, four, three, two, one. Coming up with the right arm by the ear, bringing the left one up to meet it. Turning left along the leg and bringing the hands down as we fold with a straight back. Roll the shoulders, open the chest, breathe in. Bend the elbows to fold, breathing out. Extend the arms. Lift the chest on an inhale. Come in deeper, exhale. Arms reach forward, chest open. Slowly coming down. And holding wherever you are for 10 more seconds. Make sure that that knee points straight up to the ceiling. Stepping the hands back nice and close to the body now, rolling the shoulders back and sitting up nice and straight with a long spine. Left foot is going to cross over the right knee. Plant the left hip down on the floor. We're going to spin over to the left. All the bones open, shoulders dropping back. And coming back to the front. I'm just going to have a quick time check to see if I've got time for the last two stretches I want to do. Let's see if you've lost reflection. Fine, it's not 11 yet. Let's just do it. Okay, so we're going to start with quads. So lying on the floor for the next two stretches, I'll just change the angle of my mat. I'm going to be lying on our side. So if you want to lie on the side that's facing the camera, that would be great. Trev's come to visit me. Oh, Trev, can I have my mat, please, buddy? Can I have my mat, please, buddy? Okay. So we're lying on the side. Our knees are in line with our hips, and our bottom arm is our pillow. You can bend your elbow in this position here. So we're going to keep our hips square and this knee and ankle need to travel in line with it. We're going to take the heel back in line with the hip. And just make sure that your foot is tracking with the center of your bottom. So it's not at the top edge. It's not at the center the bum crease. It's in the center of the butt cheek and the knee is pointing straight ahead. Once you do that, I'd like you to squeeze your bottom and feel your top hip pushing forward and then start to extend the knee further back without losing neutral pelvis. So you're not allowed to arch your back. Keep the belly really strong. Once we're here, we're gonna press the foot into the hands. Four, three, two, one. Now relax. And see if we can squeeze the bottom, push the hip forward and slightly draw that knee further back. Keeping it in parallel, holding here for 10 seconds. And then slowly bringing that knee back on top of the other knee. Now the arm that's underneath you, we're going to bring it out to follow the line of the thighs. So it's going to come out long and straight below you. We're going to rest the head down on the ground. Or if that feels better to put the, the block underneath it, you can. But the position of your head will change. So make sure that the edge of the block is underneath and that your chin is able to drop down. Top hand is resting on top of the bottom hand. This is your archer stretch. 
So we're going to slide the hand along the inside line of your arm. Once it gets to your chest, you roll open. Now that elbow needs to touch the floor before you extend the arm fully to the side. I'm blocked by my balcony. <laughs> and then slowly bring the hand back onto your chest. Slide it across to the starting shoulder and slide it all the way along until your shoulders are stacked at the beginning. So I want you to really draw it open, really feel the shoulder and then the elbow touch the ground. Cool. So we slide the hand along. We're on both shoulders now. Now the elbow touches the ground and we reach out until the back of the hand comes down. Bring the hand back onto the chest. Slide it all the way across. So take two more of these. I want you to feel your arm reach as far as it can in both directions now. Make sure your head follows the movement. Don't forget to ask me if you've got any questions. Last one. All the way back. All right, now from here, the hand that's on top is going to press in front of you. You're going to use that to come up to sit, bring the other arm out, make it all the way up, and flip it over to the other side. I'm going to have to contend with the dog. That is okay. So you'll use your top hand to stretch your quad and your bottom hand is your pillow. I will have to use my bottom hand to stretch my quad. So we start with the knee stacked. We start with the arm underneath us. Ready to go. Make sure you're in neutral spine, neutral pelvis. Once we take that foot back, we make sure it's in the center of the butt cheek. It's not at the top, it's not at the bottom. The tailbone is tucked. Squeeze your bottom to extend the knee away in parallel. Then we're going to push the foot into the hands for a count of four. So pressing the foot into the hands as firmly as you can for four, three, two, one. Now relax. See if your heel can come closer to your butt cheek. Squeeze your bottom, extend through the hip, and see if the foot will come a little further back. Relaxing that, extending the arm out underneath you. Option to use the edge of the block or a cushion. Top hand stands stacked right over the bottom hand, yeah? And yourself, shoulder is slightly forward. You're going to open the book. So slide the arm along the inside. Slide it across your chest. We open out slowly until both shoulders are on the ground and the other arm opens all the way back. We're trying to keep the hips and the knees stacked, but if your spinal mobility, mine isn't so good on this side, my knees come apart, that's okay. We're working to get both shoulders on the ground. And if the knees have to open to facilitate that, that's fine. Bend the elbow, place the hand on the chest, come back across. Slide it all the way through. Trev, you're smooshing my face. Slide it back slowly. Open all the way out. Shoulders should get to the floor before the elbow, but you know, we do what we can. And then close and come all the way back. We've got two more and then we're done, guys. Taking your time, feeling into it, going as far as you can in both directions, really exploring the mobility of your rib cage. And once you come all the way across, press the hand down in front of you, use it to push yourself to come up to sit. We're going to roll onto the knees, tuck the toes, press the heels back, just feel into that. 
Slowly press the heels down, drop the head towards the ground, not a yes. Shake it no. And one vertebrae at a time, roll up and stack the spine. Yay! Thank you so much for joining me today, guys.